and we're ready to go. Okay, great. So welcome everyone to Around the Kitchen Table with Chef Dennis Lipley and myself, Susan Sarah, and we're going to have another great show today. Hi, Dennis. Hi, Susan. It's good to see you. How are things in New York? Just great. Just great. Uh, there is that one. I'm going to be a judge at the Taste of Inverness. That's what I'm thinking of. <laughs> I can't keep That's track. How- you know, I did some filming. I think that was two weeks ago. They did the filming for me. I haven't seen those yet. But uh, yeah, so today we're going to make, you know, I, I don't make meatloaf often. Uh, we don't eat a lot of beef in the house. But I saw this recipe and I thought it was interesting. And actually, I, there's a few magazines that I do buy. One of them is Healthy Living. And uh, the other was Louisiana Cooking. Which, oh. <laughs> so those are two that I like because they have nice pictures in them. And I'm very, men are very visual. We know that. Yeah. Uh, And I don't always read the recipes, but I look at the pictures and decide. So this one, I actually did go into it a little deeper. And uh, these are both inspired from recipes and and one issue of Eating Healthy magazine. And it was a spicy meatloaf. But what really got me thinking about it was the fact that it had greens inside the meat. Yeah, that is unusual. And uh, they were talking about how it helped with the structure and the texture and, and keeping it moist and, and flavor. Uh-huh. So I thought, you know, well, let's give it a try. You know, again, anything you eat in moderation is okay. It's yeah. when you eat it every day or you get crazy with portion sizes that you really have to watch. So this has got beef. And I, and I, you know, I didn't get real lean beef because, you know, it, it, fat helps beef have flavor. You know, fat equals flavor. So what is it like about 85%? Yeah, it's a chuck. Yeah. 85% and I got some ground pork. So it's it's going to be a little fattier. But you know that fat, a lot of it is going to drain away. So uh, and the rest is – and if you get something that's too lean and, – and by all means, you could use extra lean beef, extra lean pork and make it. But it's going to be a little drier and it's going to – Yeah. Now dry – yeah, dry is not good. Yeah. So, I mean, if, if, and what you're saving for fat, you know, just be good with other things that you eat. So, you know, and, and, and let, and enjoy that little bit of fat with it then. So, well, that sounds great. Yeah. So I peel down my beets and what I'm going to do before we get to the meatloaf is we're going to make a hash too today. And, and I was intrigued with this name as soon as I saw it, I'm, I'm beginning to really enjoy beets. Lisa's still on the border, even, even being Polish, she's not a big fan. Oh, of but they're like candy too, you know? Don't you think? I do. And every time I say something yeah. sweet, she wants to slap me because she, she says, no, it's not sweet. You know, this is chocolate is sweet. Beets are, are carrots. I always say the carrots are sweet. And I'll ask other people in the room, how are the carrots? Oh, they're sweet. And she just she gets crazy when we say that because she doesn't think they are. But yeah. I've got a few beets here and I'm going to use my steamer today, too. So let me get that. OK. And also let me know when um, I can cut in and talk about your kitchen. Absolutely. Okay. Anyway, let's see. I have this double tiered steamer. So I'm going to cut these beets up and actually I peeled them down and you could use any kind of beet you like. Uh, these were all that we had available at Publix. Uh, so I'm going to slice these. I was trying to think of how to do these without causing bodily harm. Oh, wait a minute. So you know, all you did was you just simply peeled off the, you yeah. know, exotic, put them in a part in no. par boiling water. Par boil- yeah. Okay. Yeah, I'm just, and I'm going to steam them for about five minutes. Now, you could roast this entire dish if you wanted to, uh, but the recipe that I got calls for steaming, so I figured I would go with it. So all I'm going to do now is cut them up into some uniform sizes so they steam well, and it's going to be a hash, so I want them to be kind of bite-sized. Mm-hmm. So these are about maybe half-inch pieces. I see you have a glove on today. I have a glove on simply because they the color is insane. Oh, okay, that's true. And I'm going to pull this down just a little bit. There we go. I just all right. Yeah, the color is insane, and it stains beats stain like crazy. Yeah. Um, so, and uh, we just lost one with a soldier. There we go on the floor. Yeah, that'll stay on for days. Oh, yeah. And even cleaning these, you know, this is when I bring out like the heavy duty cleaners and stuff. And just again, some nice little bite sized pieces. And like I said, I have really learned to enjoy beets. So I'm going to take these and put these into this steamer tray. 
And I've got two steamer trays, so I'm not going to put these together because although they are going to end up in the same dish, I don't want them to bleed together or have an opportunity to bleed together until I am ready for them to do that. Mm -hmm. and the steaming is actually going to take some of the color out. So this is going to go on the bottom layer of my steamer. And then I'm going to put the potatoes. All right, I'm going to get rid of the glove. Marcus, right, you have that, that tri-level steamer. One is for the water and two is for two other things. And I have, yeah, the second one here. So that will go. And I got that a couple weeks ago on Amazon. So let's cut these potatoes up. Gonna simply, I'm going to leave the skin on these. These were washed already. I did do that ahead of time. And they are organic potatoes. Uh, I know you don't have to buy organic. They're not one of those vegetables that is a must, which I never quite understood because they're in the ground. So I would have thought this is one thing that you would want to buy organic. Uh, but so I do. These are organic. Does it matter what kind? Uh, um, gold, Idaho. They had said russets. You know, okay. I think whatever you like, Yukon gold, anything that you like to cook with that you have, I, I wouldn't go out and buy anything special for no reason. Uh, uh, but whatever you have, and being organic, you're generally limited. You know, these got some color on them already. But you aren't. You're limited into what they have. See the? You can see some purple on them. Mm -hmm. <laughs> they picked up the beets. This oh, is why I had to go on. So, all right, let me yeah. pop the beets. I'm going to put the lid on it. Right, the water steaming. I'll listen for it. <laughs> and how long do you steam it for? They said just to steam them for five minutes. Just just enough to... Um, wow. Just Well, we're going to cook them some more in the pan. Uh-huh. Oh, true. Okay. So let me flip this over, and you'll see I have... A little um, towel under there to keep it from slipping. And all right, so that's good. We're working there. All right, so let's, well, that's cooking. Let's put our meatloaf together. And the first thing I'm going to do with the meatloaf is I'm going to cook up some greens. And I've got some, actually, I'm going to add in the beet greens that I have too. Just oh, yeah, we talked about that another time about keeping those. Yeah. Keeping a lot of different types of greens. Can you keep carrot greens? Uh, yeah. yeah. Anything that's on the top of a plant. So we're going to throw a little oil in there. And then the, the greens for the meatloaf are pretty simple. Um, and we're going to do these first because we want to let them cool a little bit. So we're going to saute uh, the greens in here with some olive oil, some garlic, uh, some onions, and get everything together and cook down. So let me real quick, while I'm doing this, I'll put these over here. Now, uh, collards, don't they take a very long time to cook? You know, it's not really that long. People generally cook them a long time, but it's not like it's something that you need to cook a long time for. It's just how you like eating them. And a lot of it has to do with the stems on them. If there's a lot of stems in them, that's generally why people cook them. Okay, because yeah, I, I remember recipes saying cook for an hour, you know, boil, boil for an hour. You yeah, know. you know, uh, and I think with traditional Southern recipes on the collards. All right, so we got some, you're gonna, with that in mind, then you're going to want to cook them down a little bit more because they spice them up and they really do more to them as a side. Mm -hmm. But number one, this is also going to go in the meatloaf and it's going to bake. So that's going to help us somewhat with that. So we have onions in the pan now. Let me throw some garlic in there as well. You know, it's really funny. I've made meatloaf for 100 years. And it's only in the last few years that I've been sauteing, um, uh, you know, onions and garlic and, and some other things before I put it into the meatloaf. I've always only put in raw, um, raw onion. Well, you know, but you could. I, I think the flavor, I don't know, I feel it's a little better when you sauté. It, adds, it does add some layers of flavor. Yeah. It gives you a little opportunity to caramelize the vegetable a little bit. 
right, and this has got a considerable amount of garlic in it because this is a spicy meatloaf. And again, nothing is a deal breaker if you don't want to put as much in. That's okay. All right, oh, this is smelling good already. Okay, let's put that over there. All right, we got nice garlic, onions. All right, let me get my greens. Check my recipe to make sure that I'm not forgetting something because you know I will. Garlic, onions, collard greens, okay, all of them. All right, so here I have my beet greens. And this looks like. Oh, wow, that looks like so much. Well, we're going to let it cook down. And this was actually about 12 ounces of greens. So let's see what this cooks down to, and then we'll take it from there. And just... Now, I am joyful. Renee says that she has caramelized onions in the fridge at all times. I would love to know why, what you do. I love the idea, but my mother used to make car caramelized onions all the time but what do you what do you use them for i'd love to know renee was just on my show with us so if you want to come in you're welcome to pop in to say hi all right so let's let these cook i'm going to turn them down just a little bit and let's get another segment of this meatloaf together and ready and that is going to be the bread now you can use regular breadcrumbs, but they're not going to quite be the same as they would. Uh, this is just a, an Italian roll that I had around that's old. So I'm going to use it with this. And I've got about a cup and a half of bread there. And then, oh, almost grab the olive oil. And I'm going to put in a little bit, a half a cup of milk. And I'm going to let these soak for a while. About five to ten minutes. So I just want to get these all coated. And Susan, while this is going on and this is cooking down, why don't you take it away? Absolutely. Okay, everyone. So we're going to continue uh, talking about Chef's uh, own personal kitchen. Uh, and I would love to know your suggestions too. And we're, we're going to talk a little bit about um, some very simple ideas here. And Chef, if you have a chance to take a look, yes. um, that would be great too. Okay, so I have three images. This first image is an overview. We're going to be talking mostly about this side of the kitchen, not so much the island this time. And it's a little further along than it was before. Uh, you know, Chef said, I want storage. So I gave him storage. I said, okay, we're giving you storage. Uh, and what I did here is, is I divided up the storage to equal um, double door cabinets. Just, you know, for symmetry, it's good to have symmetry. It's very good to have symmetry because then your eye is comfortable. And, uh, you know, it, it really looks like a composition, which is what you want. So these three cabinets are have equal size uh, doors. However, now I'm wondering if the bottoms should actually open separately from the top. And the reason is we don't use our top cabinets much at all. I mean, it's usually for overflow storage. It's a big door to open. It's, you know, it's a pain in the neck. And I thought if maybe if we divide it into two separate cabinets, each one, you know, th that's a thought. Um, and you tell me what you think about that one big door. No, it's little doors. I like that. All right. Okay, that's good. No, I agree. I totally agree with that. I think that's a great idea. And then when we go to the next one, now um, on the bottom you can see I have three wide sets of drawers. There, there are advantages to drawers. Um, one is that the most obvious one, it's a single motion. With a cabinet, you have to open open the cabinet and then uh, and then pull out a rollout shell, for example. The drawer is one motion. If you're lazy like I am, you know, it's really nice to just open the drawer and there you go. Um, also, the you have a beautiful, a really nice look. It's, it's visually, it makes the wall look wider when you have these horizontal drawers, one right after the other. So it's a it's a lovely look. It's a little bit more of a furniture look when you have drawers over typical base 
tall cabinet doors with a drawer at the top. So it's a little bit of uh, more of an elegant look. It's it's horizontal. It makes the wall look wider. But also, believe it or not, these drawers can hold a 12 quart pot. Wow. It can hold a 12 quart pot. Um, at the time we order your cabinets, I will measure your, um, you'll measure your pot and you'll tell me what it is. And then we'll take, you know, we'll, we'll make sure, um, you know, that also it, now in the inserts, which are always fun. The, uh, let me see, here we go. The inserts of the drawers, you can have, you have nice wide top drawers. You have three and then another one in the corner. You can have a knife insert. You can put spices you can even have spices arranged alphabetically in the drawer insert. <clears throat> you can have re removable dividers, of course, utensils. Now, cutting boards, we have to talk about where to put your cutting boards, but I have a couple of ideas on that. How many cutting boards do you have? I just have two uh, ones that I use all the time. I have okay. wooden ones that I use for decorating or for serving. But for cutting, I, I pretty much use the same... Lexan or whatever the heck these are, cutting boards all the time. And they're just a couple different sizes. Yep. Okay. So we need those accessible. And of course, there's, a, there's the good old bread box. I don't know if you use the bread box. How you how do you store your bread? It's it's on top of the refrigerator. <laughs> <laughs> okay. So we need to get... Okay. Good to now know. Bread box. Good to know. We need to uh, find a place for the bread. And you know, a lot of people actually store dishes in a drawer and which is you know nice so you don't have to reach up and they, they store very very well in um in drawers so in the corner here we have a typical um base cabinet with a tall door and a drawer and that would be good for taller items so if when if you do have a few taller items they can go there and the next image uh, is then again we go back to the top layer above the refrigerator for example maybe that's where you have vertical storage and you pull out uh, you pull out the baking sheets and you pull out the cutting board and things that are uh, you know they, they're not good stacked you know top to bottom they're good stacked vertically side to side so you just take out what you need um, so maybe we have vertical storage up here, or maybe we have vertical storage down in this cabinet. Um, now, the hood, this is just a generic hood that I have, but, you know, we're going to be talking about that, um, you know, making the hood a focal point. Tell me something. What's above the kitchen? Is it a roof or is it an, or an upstairs? No, it's a roof. Oh, great. We're just all on one floor. Great. So can we break open uh, through the roof and have you vent through the roof? Yes, absolutely. There, there already is a small one, but yeah, we can do that. Okay, perfect. Good. So yeah, that's something we have to talk about too. The, the type of ventilation, the CFMs, mm -hmm. you know, how much cubic feet air movement that you need and, and things like that. Um, so we'll, th th that's often coordinated with the cooking uh appliance and then in the corner uh you know that could also be overflow storage with closed doors or that could we could also do open shelves there dare i say but you know i really know that you like um you know more storage more 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 storage yeah. so yeah so that's where we are talking about the inserts and next week we'll talk i think we'll talk about the island and then we'll talk about, you know, aesthetics and color and, and things like that. But, you know, this gives um, people an overview and please give us your suggestions and ideas. And so what do you think? So far, so good? So far, so good. It looks, looks amazing. It's like, I just want it now. I know, I know, I know, I know. <laughs> well, I've been working on the greens a little bit while you've been talking. And all I did was I put in some Worcestershire sauce. Uh -huh. And I put in a little bit of hot sauce. And the hot sauce is optional. And if you really like spicy, this is some Florida, Florida bean red hot sauce that I had gotten. So I, I don't use a lot of hot sauce unless I'm making wings or something that really needs it. But uh, in this case, I used it. So I, I put that in there. I turned it down. I added a little more oil and a little water. And now I'm going to hit it with some spices. And I have smoked paprika. Mm -hmm. I have cumin, salt, sea salt, and black pepper. But yeah, I'm, I'm anxious to get this uh, kitchen going. 
uh, and it's going to be a showpiece when it's done. Oh, it is. Oh, it is. And the other I, thing we have to talk about, have we talked about lighting at all? No, we have to talk. That's a, no, we have to talk about lighting, test oh. lighting. Yep. You know, oh my gosh, there's so much news and task lighting, you know, LEDs and you, they can be warm light. They can be very bright. Um, so, you know, it, it's, and you can even do LED recessed lighting too. So, so that looks great. Yeah. It's, it's going to be, it's got it really some cooked down. I can't believe how much it cooked down. And it, it'll actually cook down a little bit more. It's I, I turned it down cause I didn't want it to burn And See, this is what we're talking about cooking it for longer these little stems okay they're actually not too bad but they need to be um they need to be a little softer but you're again it's going to bake and I, I may not use all of this we're going to see when i start putting it together how it comes up since this is my first time making this with everyone so this is this is an experimentation and although i am a trained chef so i have a little bit more idea how it's going to go in the first time a lot of the things that I do make here, I'm making for the first time with you guys. So I know what to correct, what needs to be changed. But I'm also showing you that it is that simple. It's not rocket science. So you just give something a try. Worst thing could happen is it would turn into chili. <laughs> okay. <laughs> but, you know, it's a funny story. We made these meatloafs when I was working at this place. And we had a lot of meatloaf left over. And it was a good meatloaf. But we repurposed it and we made chili and it was the best chili. oh my gosh you're it, was kidding. One of those, no, it was one of those things that the people are going oh you got to make this again and we're going well, yeah we got to make meatloaf first wow. yeah it's not it's not that simple but it made and it kept thickening up and it kept thickening up it, it was just wonderful wow but people loved it so like i said you know there's always something if it doesn't quite turn out the way you think it's going to turn out there's always something to do that's true open face sandwich and you know renee was saying that her she's polish and her heritage they eat a lot of open face sandwiches she didn't know that you use two slices of bread until later in life and i was saying that's the same thing with you and your that's and right sandwiches yeah no open face sandwiches are really wonderful they're great i don't make them enough yeah you know it is and you, you, it, it makes the vehicle more of a star than mm -hmm. the uh than the bread yeah, it does. In fact, you know, we I, I have to confess, uh, my husband has been going to Panera. You know Panera? Yeah. yeah, like and we have one nearby like almost every day for lunch. And they're so fresh and they're so good and everything, but it gets costly. Yes. So I made a meatloaf last night, a turkey meatloaf, really just for lunch. And I think I'm going to, um, in fact, I'd like to explore that with you. Um, you know, lunch, uh, you know, what can we make for lunch that we can have for a few days and, you know, if you're home and if you don't want to default to cold cuts, yeah, you know, well, what can we do for lunch? You think about your dinners and my dinners are generally my lunch the next day or for the next, whether I incorporate it in a salad or a sandwich. So just by making some adjustments to it, like this meatloaf, like Renee said, will make a lovely sandwich. And it can right. be a stacker. It can be an open face. So, you know, get a nice piece of bread, toast it, put it on top of it. And then something as simple as just, you know, cutting some onions very fine and either sauteing or caramelizing them. Or if you have the time, breading them and just getting them nice and crispy a little bit frying them up. Oh, a what a good idea. You know, and then you can pile them up on top of it so it looks visually appealing and you're not having leftovers you know just leftovers for lunch yeah now in, in scandinavia they would do a red cabbage you could do a red cabbage from the can and just put that on top of of an open face sandwich with meatloaf and yes. it you know looks great and gives a, a, another flavor sliced okay. cucumbers too i am transferring this over and I'm going to let this cool for a little while. So I've got it in a bowl. And then we're going to start on our hash. Put this back on the stove. Okay. So this is this is a little bit about timing today for me. Oh, okay. yeah. A quick question. How many pounds of meat do you have to that um, greens, to the greens you just made? I have two pounds. Okay. 
So I may pull, well, after these cool a bit, I may pull some of them out and see how it mixes together. Yeah. Overwhelm the meat. Mm -hmm. But for now, this is what the recipe had called for. And uh, it, of course, wouldn't hurt to have all this in it, but it's a matter of personal preference. So I want to see how it kind of blends in. So I'm probably going to take about half of this out before and add it in after I, I get the mix together. So let me move this aside, let it cool. And while we're doing that, all right, now let's start on our getting ready for our hash. So the first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to cut up this fennel bone. And we cut it in half simply by that. It's beautiful, nice little fennel. And I'm going to take out, just like Renee did earlier, she had Brussels sprouts. And I've never seen anybody take the core out, but it makes sense when she said it to do that. Um, she said a lot of times in Brussels sprouts, that's what's bitter. And that's the truth with most things is the core is the bitter part because that's the root coming up. So here are my Brussels or my uh, fennel. I'm just going to trim off. I would love to do a show on fennel. I have no idea what to do with fennel. Well, the best thing you can do with fennel, if you never use it for anything else, is roast it. Oh. Roast fennel is lovely. Really? And mix it in with your other vegetables. If you're going to roast potatoes, put some fennel and some onions in with it. If you're going to roast uh, Brussels sprouts, put some fennel in it. I mean, this is great just to add in any other roasted vegetables like carrots and fennel or just fennel by itself is wonderful. And what do you roast it for like a half an hour, 45 minutes? Yeah, about 45 minutes is, is a good time. Um, you know, and, and I'll go even up to an hour sometimes on, on roasted vegetables because you want them to really get time to caramelize and to sweeten. So here I'm just going to cut, and I'm not cutting tiny pieces. Again, this is going in the hash, so I want them to be kind of about the same size. So that's, and I'm going to cut a little bit of this in here. Slice these down. So I, I actually am going to work with about maybe a cup, or depending upon how much you wanted to make, a cup and a half of each of the vegetable. So this is going to start. Let me turn this on. Let's get some olive oil in here. Here. And then I'm also going to cut up some shallot, and some garlic. There we go. Shallots and, and garlic? Yeah, shallots mm, and garlic. Nice. Very yeah, it's, nice. It's going to be really flavorful. And I, I like to make the garlic just a little bit smaller because, you know, you don't want to eat, unless it's like roasted garlic. And, and roasted garlic with your family is also a good option anytime you're doing. Put some whole cloves in there and they get nice and Lisa would hate it, but sweet. <laughs> and, uh, you know, it's great. So, push that to the side. Let's cut up this. And if you've never had a shallot, you know, it's kind of like an onion. Oh, I love shallots. I love them. Yeah, it's right in between, isn't it? Yeah. Um, it just adds another type of flavor. Uh, you see them in a lot of French cooking. It's kind of like a snobby onion. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, there you go. Yeah. Uh, a highfalutin onion. We're just going to. And, you know, it's a little bit milder than an onion, too. So if you're not a big fan of onions, this is a way to get some of that deliciousness in there without all that onion. Mm -hmm. We're going to use two whole shallots. Because again, this is a side dish. You want it to be flavorful. You want it to have some character. And you know, this does add some nice flavor to it. So all the ingredients in that is the potatoes, the beets, the fennel, um, the uh, garlic and shallots. And what, am I missing anything? Nope, that's it. That's all, all right. we got. Okay. So it's this, and again, this could be all roasted too. If you don't want to do this uh, in a saute pan, you know, you can roast these together. I would leave a little bit bigger pieces of um, the shallot and garlic if you did. But, okay, so that is it. Uh, the only thing I'm going to do is I'm going to save some of these because I'm going to decorate with them. Ah. All right, so here is... This is going to saute a little bit. Let's put a little sea salt, a little black pepper, 
Okay. Turn this down just a little bit. And doing this with your pan is not real difficult. When you flip stuff, you want to get things down to this end of the pan. And then you just pull. Oh, I can't believe you're doing that. I've been I've been experimenting with flipping yeah. last week. Well, that's the secret. It comes down to this end, and then you pull it back to you. Pull it back. Okay. Okay. So that's all there is. It, 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 and just it, be patient. It takes time. And <laughs> he, either do something the dog will like to eat or clean up the floor right after you. Uh, my uh -huh. boss used to stand back all the time. And the real tricky part is when there's a lot of liquid in there. That's when it gets Oh, out. Yeah, because I had to flip things. And I thought, okay, let me, let me, let me try so here. We're going to let this cook just a little bit. Let's see how my greens are doing. Because I don't want to add super hot greens to the meat. Yeah, I know. I know what well, you mean. Like spreading it up the sides of the bowl yeah. a little bit. Well, you could always put them in a bowl of ice water too. I mean, yeah, inside a bigger bowl. Or you could do this ahead of time and mm -hmm. put it in the refrigerator. You know, and again, the whole meatloaf is something that you can do ahead of time. Uh, that's the beauty of meatloaf. And then cook it when you're ready. And I'm also going to show you a technique for cooking meatloaf. I'm not going to do it with this one because I want to coat it really well while it's baking so it has some beautiful color. All right, so here now I'm going to add in my potatoes. And my beets. Ribs here. All right. And now wow, they are that looks great. That looks interesting. Really different. Well, you know, that's again out of your comfort zone. Mm -hmm. Something. It's going to give you some flavors. And, you know, everything's going to get red now, but it's going to be like a pink and a red. So, you, you know, you could have steamed them together. It's not like you're stopping it. but And, you know, and I, I do like to mix them together before I toss them because now I can toss them a little bit. But there's a lot in the pan, and it, it is a little trickier to do that much in the pan. So even I'll use a spoon. Oh, see, Carolyn. Just join us. How you doing? Welcome. There you go. So anyway, uh, if you have any questions, now's a good time to ask too. So we're doing the red flannel hash. Yep. Renee's asking if you've used red potatoes for your mashed potato recipes. Yes, I, I use whatever I can buy, and it's just like she said, whatever looks best when you're in the stores. That's what I buy. Or if something's on sale, you know, let's be honest, uh, I might opt for the red bliss and rather than the uh, Yukon gold. Yukon gold is kind of like my favorite potato because it almost looks like it has butter in before you put butter in. Yeah, it really does. And you know, Renee also said mashed potatoes with celeriac, ce celeric? Celeric. And yeah. Celeric and fennel, so yummy. What is celeric? Celeric is another root. Um, so you would take the root and cut it down and cook it. And just like people are, are making mashed cauliflower too. There's always things mm -hmm. you can add to give it more flavor. And and just to get more vegetables in there. But celeric is a nice root. I, I I don't use it hardly at all. I really need to. And again, it's one of those things Lisa's going to look at it and go, what the hell is that? <laughs> yeah, today's, today's the last day I can order for my CSA, my weekly fruits and vegetables and meat, you know, CSA thing. I'm going to just order beets and fennel and a bunch of stuff. I need to, you know, expand. <laughs> okay. So I've got that cooking. We're just going to let it cook for a little while. I did turn it down a bit as I don't want it to burn, but I wanted to get some color to it. So that's going to cook while I'm doing that. And let's get back to our meatloaf. All right. So here, real quickly, I'm going to take some of this out. Just in case it's too much. I think we'll leave a, a little more than half of it in. And now I'm going to add in some ground pork. And again, you know, feel free to use whatever meats you like um, to make it healthier. But, uh, you know, also, like I said before, this is a time maybe just to enjoy it. We're not going to have meatloaf that often. 
right? And this is ground beef. Uh, if you have buffalo, bison, you know, that's always a good alternative to beef too. Or if you want to cut it back a little and use some ground chicken, you know, that's fine. Mm -hmm. yeah, that would work well. I, you know, I like ground chicken more than turkey because it generally has a little more fat in it. So that oh. keeps it better, you know, keeps it, it keeps it from turning into cardboard. So, all right, so what else we got? So we got that, oh, bread. And we have our bread here. It was soaked in milk. Oh, nice. That's so right. It's going to go over there. All right. What else do we have? We have two eggs. It's a binder. We have a half a cup of ketchup. Got to have ketchup. I know. Got to add. You know what I do? Sometimes I add chili sauce. Chili sauce. You know, and, it. Yeah. It's it's. You know, a little fresh taste. Okay, and I can see, I think I can put this in. We're going to add all that back in. So the recipe was right. Oh, that looks delicious. That good? looks great. Now, one thing, you want to mix this all. And let's see, make sure I didn't leave something out. One thing I always put in my meatloaf is Worcestershire sauce. We have Worcestershire sauce in the uh, greens. Oh, I you did? Did I miss that? I must yeah, I put that. some Worcestershire sauce okay. and hot sauce right in ah. the green. This is looking good. This is going to be pretty. It's like almost fluorescent, fluorescent orange. It is. All right, let's see if I miss anything. I'm going to not be too proud to read the recipe. All right, uh, breadcrumbs, ketchup, eggs, a little salt. All right, which I did put some in the greens, but we're going to put a little bit more in there. Oh. All right, and da, 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 da. that's it. Okay, uh, again, you know, like with a lot of things, I tell you not to overmix things because what happens when you overmix is that it gets tough. So you want to mix this enough. This is a little bit of a wet mixture, so it should, and that's the egg. So it should bake up with a little bit more moisture is what I'm thinking. Mm -hmm. I think the greens are really what's going to give it that little more moisture. All right, so we're just going to let this sit for a little while and let everything absorb a bit. Because what happens when things are wet is that um, if you give it a few minutes to sit, it kind of settles itself down. Oh, geez. I wish I thought of that. Last night I made a, a turkey meatloaf. It was very moist. Yeah. And, I, you know, and I immediately put it in the pan, and it was just not making a bigger pile. You know what I mean? <laughs> the volume, it was just like, so, yeah, it wasn't doing it. Okay, these are, and our uh, hash is browning up nicely. Let's see how this beat is. Mm. Wow. Wonderful. Now, do you want to get that brown? Do you want to brown that? Um, you know, it's not, I don't know if it's going to really brown the way I want it to. But we're going to give it a whack and let it cook a little bit more. So we're going to let that cook. Now, let me show you how we would do this in, um, in, in mass production for meatloaf. I'm going to take a piece of parchment. And this is, and I would put this here. And you can see this is wet. Yeah. Okay, but it's still forming pretty well. It is. So I think with this being wet, it's going to cook up very nicely and moist. And for this purpose, I'm only going to use this much of it because this is what we would do. Like when we were making meatloafs. Oh, you're kidding me. I can't believe I I can't believe that. I'm blown away. Okay. So now wow. what's gonna happen is the fat's gonna kind of drain out of it. And there's your meatloaf. I I get that's life changing. Yeah. So this is how we would do like we were doing, and we use the, we have the big sheets of paper at work so it um 
it's easier to roll up and you get a little bit more overhang. I could have uh -huh. made this a little bit bigger, but this is all you really need to do. Wow. What, what about um, browning? Well, that's the thing. They're not going to brown quite as much. But if I was making this like this is going to be a mass produced meatloaf, mm. you could always open it up, coat it with something, put it under the broiler. Yeah. But if we were making these like and we're making 40 or 50 meatloafs, we would do these this size because they're easier to handle. Put them on a sheet pan so I could fit maybe five of these on a sheet pan and they would basically be as long as a sheet pan. And then I would bake them come out, let them cool, and then they cut really nicely. They're uniform. The big thing about this is they're nice and uniform. I can't and believe that. That's life-changing for me. Let, me. let me ask you a question. Is there any oven that is too hot to use parchment paper? No, not, not that we're going to be using. Uh, at worst case scenario, like a pizza oven, it'll turn brown and ugly. Okay. But with the moisture involved in this, it won't, that won't happen. The moisture is going to keep it from turning colors. Mm -hmm. uh, so no, and you're going to bake meatloaf with it around 350 anyway. Right. So you're you're not going to run into those problems. Um, it'll it'll be fine in there. So I mean, if you want to do it, like I said, I am going to bake it open because I want to let it get some color. And actually, because this is a little wet, I think it might be better off baking it open. So and I I might actually take the rest of that meat and make a smaller loaf and freeze it because this is I may make two small ones because this is a lot of meatloaf for us to eat. So I may save one and uh, cook it and then freeze it, or I may just save it and let it freeze raw. So uh, are you afraid be that it's a little too moist that it may fall apart later? No, not at all. Oh, no, this isn't going anywhere. This That egg in this is, is going to let it bake up very nicely. No, it's not. If it was going to fall apart, it would be sliding right now. Oh, it's yeah. Holding it's holding its shape fine. Any more bread in this? Because I'm thinking, wow, when I took it out, this is a little wet. And I would, my first inclination was to add more bread to it. But what that's going to do is that's going to toughen it up more. And it's not really going to going to have it be that lovely, nice piece of uh, mm -hmm. meat that you want. So this is fine. As long as it holds its shape and it's, it's holding it perfectly. Uh, it's got a nice, lovely little crown to it. So uh, I, I think it'll be fine like this. How did, did yours hold up? Did yours hold its shape? Um, I don't know because my husband, I made it last night and then and then took it. Yeah, I think it did actually. I think it did. And then my husband took it out, um, put and it you away. Know, if you're afraid, that's okay. you can always put it in a loaf pan. I was wondering about that too. Yeah, you could always do it in a loaf pan. I mean, there's there's no harm in that as well. So, you know, there's always a way around it because it'll the, the egg and the moisture will cook out of it and it will bake up. So if you want to get more brownness out of it, you know, it, and then you want to transfer it from that loaf pan after it's set up. There you go. What what about a loaf pan with holes drilled into it for the fat to um, okay. drain out? What about that? You could do that. I've never done it, but that sounds like a good idea. Mm. You know, uh, uh, they have those bread, those baguette things that you bake bread into. Yeah. With their end. I mean, that'll help it keep its shape. And I it'll... like that. Yeah. Easy. That so, looks hey, fantastic. Karen just stopped by. Karen, we made a, a meatloaf today. All right. So let's let's just a little quick review of what we did. Uh, we made a spicy meatloaf and it could be healthier than it is if you use lower fat meats, but the fat is an important part of meat because it makes it tasty and it makes it tender and it gives it some more structure. All right. So I've got beef, pork. I cooked down some collard greens with, uh, all right, what did I put in there? Onions. Um, I had some seasonings. I had cumin. Uh, uh, smoked paprika. Paprika, salt and pepper. I used a little Worcestershire sauce and some hot sauce. So that made up and some garlic. So that made up the basis for this loaf. And uh, I was just showing people how you can roll it. But I, I want this to get some nice color because, honestly, you know, you want to see some visuals with this. So I'm going to let this bake for about a half an hour. And I'm going to brush it with some more ketchup. Or you could use any kind of sauce, chili sauce. I'm in love with sweet chili sauce now. Yeah, I know. <laughs> I know. I use it. it with, and, and then you could change the spices in this, too. Say you want to make it something more... Um, Mediterranean or, or, or Moroccan or something. You can adjust your spices in this to make it and use whatever kind of sauce you want to. 
So then we're gonna bake it, brush it, and let it cook for probably about another half an hour. The best thing you can do with meatloaf is get yourself, or with anything you cook, a little digital thermometer. Because what you wanna make sure, especially with ground meat, the problem we have with ground meat is there's so many edges, because it's double ground. When it gets goes through once, it's ground up, and then they feed it through again. So it's double ground. So that's making so many edges where bacteria can cling to and get us sick. And that's why we have so many problems with ground beef. That's because of how it's prepared. So you want to make sure you cook it to 165 degrees. Okay? So that's where this comes in nice and handy. And just remember not to have it set on centigrade because you'll make yourself crazy wondering why it's not when you're hot. That enough. happened to me two weeks ago. I was like, it's 89 degrees. Oh, oh my God. I have to serve it. No, what's wrong with my oven? Yeah. After so, an hour. That's the point. So, you know, insert it in when it's cooked. Get a reading. Meat temperature will rise about 10 degrees after it comes out. But you really want to make sure if it's if it's ground that it's at 165 before you take it out. All right. And again, the longer you leave it in, then it's going to get drier. So it's that sweet spot that you find. So that's my tip on that. And then over here we have our red flannel hash, which is going to cook down a little bit more, but it's looking pretty good. That looks fantastic. That looks like dessert. Uh, and I bet it's sweet too between the fennel and the uh, beets. This is very nice. Mm. I would like it to crisp up a little bit. So I'm thinking I might put it in a very high oven to let it finish. We'll see. This is going to be for dinner tonight, so I don't want it to finish it all the way either way. Or possibly just a bigger, clean frying pan with oil in it. Hot. Yeah, I like things a little crispy. Yeah. I think that'll be, and that, I'll probably do that instead. I'll just get, I have a bigger skillet. This was a lot for this skillet, and that could have probably been the problem. Mm -hmm. If it had been wider it, it would have, and, or made a smaller amount, it would have crisped up better. So I'm thinking that's probably the problem with this. Let's see. Do you recommend sea or kosher salt in the early stages instead of fine salt? Michael, you know, I, I, I don't almost ever have kosher salt in the house but I do always have sea salt in the house. Uh, I know there's certain applications you want to use like brining and stuff. You want to use kosher salt. The fine salt is going to have, you're going to end up using a lot more fine salt if you try to use the same amount. So that's one of the reasons to use kosher salt because it measures differently. You always have to cut back when a recipe calls for uh, coarse salt and you use fine, you have to cut back the amounts. I mean, I know you know that, uh, but uh, that would be, one of the things, like I said, I almost never have kosher, kosher salt in the house, but uh, I have coarse salt, different kinds of sea salt, so they're fine. But my all-purpose salt is just like a Mediterranean fine sea salt. And be consistent with what you use because you know how to salt things at home. So if you're using a coarse salt, you know how much coarse salt goes in there because you know, your taste buds will tell you. If you're using a fine salt, you know how much sea salt, how much salt to use because your taste buds will tell you. So it's all a matter of using what you're used to. Okay, so uh, in here we have fennel, shallots, garlic, beets, and potatoes. And I steamed them all. And what I did mention was that, you know, you could just roast them all if you didn't want to do it in a pan. So this is something you could get ready ahead of time put it in your refrigerator and the next morning, come on. And, uh, and the next day you, when you come home, put it in the oven and let it cook. So you have dinner, nice dinner waiting for you. That looks great. I mean, who wouldn't, I, you know, think of kids, you show that to kids, they're going to gobble it up. Oh, absolutely. And this is a great way to get them to eat beets because it looks colorful. That's right. Exactly. It almost looks like, like maraschino cherries. Exactly. Yeah. Now you had some, you were re beautiful. Yeah, yeah, that's, there's so much good stuff in there. You know, good for good for kids and fun to eat and, and so on. So now you had that, um, the fennel greens. Oh, yep. Yeah. And what I was gonna do with the fennel greens is simply just chop them up a little bit. And when you go to serve, just here, oh, beautiful. Little, you know, again, visual. It, it's just a matter of 
uh, visually pleasing. Mm -hmm. You can't see it as much. But just to add a little bit on, make it a little more appealing. And that's it. So that's our around the kitchen table. It was a little ambitious, but it shows you what you can accomplish in an hour. What time is it? Yeah, we've been on an hour. So um, again, this is stuff you can do ahead of time. Like I said, with the meatloaf, I've made enough. For the two of us, I'm gonna I'm gonna break it down into two, and I may wrap one. I think I will wrap one in the parchment paper and freeze it that way. Okay, that way, yeah. and then take it out for lunch or whatever. We'll take it out when I want to have another when we want to have another meatloaf because that'll be plenty for us to eat, and uh, you could make them up ahead of time. All you know, make a few while you're doing it. You know, it's always best to cook once and eat twice or three times. So, you know, that's a good way to, to do some extra work. And then, you know, once it's frozen, put it in a Ziploc bag, close it up good, date it, write what it is on it, leave it in the in the parchment. And then when you're ready to cook, take it out the day before and let it thaw out and bake it. And you can also put it on an open face sandwich. Absolutely. Yeah. I think we may do that too. Get some nice sourdough bread. Yeah. And what kind of cheese? What do you think? Cheese? Yeah, oh, come on, we gotta have some cheese. I don't there. think so. Really? No, you're not gonna do cheese. Oh, uh, okay. I was thinking some kind of cheese on it just to make it again more interesting, but definitely some fried onions. I think I will uh, French fry some onions. You need like a remoulade mm -hmm. kind of thing. Um, you know, th that's that's what they do over there so much, almost like a tartar sauce, but yeah. but different. Yeah, with different flavors, basically a tartar sauce, swapping out and yeah. putting some chili sauce in or putting some mustard in and, and just make some different uh, different sauces for your sandwich. Excellent. Gouda. Gouda. There you go, Michael. Well, this is beautiful. This is, is visually beautiful. Love the colors. Fun for the winter. Yep. Nice. Yep. And and who knew uh, you anyone would put uh, collards in meatloaf? Great. It did come out well. I mean, I, I like yeah. that. I like, you know, I like things when they have visual interest. Mm -hmm. You know, that's that's part of it. Like Just like your kitchen. Yep. Same thing. You know, it can function, but it's got to look good, too. And if you come with your it's partner, enjoyment. your partner comes home, you say we're having meatloaf for dinner, and they go, oh, and then you bring this out. That's right. That's a whole different game. Beautiful. All right. So, well, thank you. Next week we are doing, well, in uh, just about 10 minutes, I'm coming on with Christine Thomas to make our vegan chocolate silk pie. So that'll be coming up next. Oh, that's not guilty. That's a not guilty dessert. No. And uh, then next week we're going to do some uh, lo mein. I think it's shrimp lo mein and some fried rice. So I'll show you how easy it is to mix those up for a nice little a change of pace for dinner. So that's what we're trying to bring you now, some change of pace for dinner, to liven up your kitchen uh, with some easy food to make and uh, change up your menu a bit. Sounds great. Good job. Sounds that's great. Good. I'm hungry. Great seeing you today. I know I am too. <laughs> so, much. so thanks for coming around our kitchen okay. table, and we'll see you next week. Bye-bye.